Dr. Williams brilliantly weaves together orthodox theology with practical application, resulting in a work meaty enough for the scholar, yet digestible and building for the everyday Christian goer. This book is an important contribution to the 21st century Christian community. Elder Williams has provided an excellent text that includes research, sermons, and illustrations that are designed to enlighten the mind, while providing further dialogue among those who wish to gain a deeper understanding of the term, the God-man. Dr. J.D. Williams' insightful perspective regarding the revelation of the mystery between God and Christ is a must-read for all in search of more weighty theological enlightenment. Author and pastor Dr. J.D. Williams presents The God-Man, The Person and the Work of Christ Jesus, available on Amazon, iTunes, and Barnes & Noble. Get your copy today. Please join us for our weekly events. On Monday night at 6.30 p.m., we have our prayer line via conference call. On Wednesday night at 7.30 p.m., we have our adult Bible study ages 18 and up. On Thursday night at 7 p.m., we have our men's Bible study. On Friday night at 7 p.m., we have our youth Bible study ages 5 to 17. On Saturday morning at 10 a.m., we have our women's Bible study. All access codes and passwords will be on the screen. SJBC is hosting a virtual women's conference on Saturday, October 10th, starting at 10 a.m. Speakers include Lady Janice Williams of SJBC, Dr. Margarita Story, Reverend Sandra Townsend Brown, and Evangelist Ebony Witzel. All women are invited to this free conference. Come ready to discuss and focus on forgiveness. You can register by clicking on the link shown. Welcome to our Sunday morning worship experience. We ask that you like, follow, and share our Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube page. And we ask that you join us every Sunday morning at 11.30 a.m. virtually or now in-house at 7405 Rockaway Beach Boulevard, where we serve Jesus boldly on this corner. We ask that you like this um, broadcast. We ask that you share. Even those that are here, why don't you share? Why don't you text somebody and say, St. John is on live. We're looking to hear a word from the Lord. And I don't know about you, but it's good to be in the sanctuary one more time. And I know you may not be in the sanctuary watching us, but you can feel his presence through virtual um, broadcast, our virtual social media. We thank God for our media team who's allowing you to watch us, and we want to get right into the service. Amen. Let's, let's have a word of prayer. Father God, we do thank you right now that you have allowed us to be here one more time. Somebody died yesterday, but you woke us up. Somebody died this week, but you woke us up, and since we're still here, we're going to give your name the glory. Everything may not be good in our life, but you're still good. And you're good all the time. We thank you, Lord. We have a few aches and pains in our body, but you've still given us grace to make it here one more time. You woke us up this morning. We may be in our living room. We may be in our bedroom, but we still going to give your name to praise. Lord, we thank you for everyone that's watching this broadcast. Let something be said, sung, that heals and delivers. And those that's in the sanctuary, Lord, bless us that we receive a word. We need something from you, Lord. We need something from you, and you have it, and we thank you even on today. So we'll lift our hands, we'll clap our hands, and we say thank you, Jesus. We say hallelujah to the King. 
all these blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Can we make a loud sound as we go into our worship service? Come on, can we just shout hallelujah one more time? Come on. I know you keep saying why he keeps saying shout hallelujah, but 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 hallelujah is the, is the highest praise that you can give to God. Amen. So we're going to welcome our Elder Griffin to come now to work, lead us into our hymn of this morning. And then we're going to go further in the service. Amen. Praise the Lord. Bless you, the Lord. Give him glory, honor, and praise. How many glad you came to worship the Lord today? Are you glad to be in the house? Are you glad to turn on your computer, your TV, whatever it is that you're viewing us, just to be in the presence of the Lord? It's an old hymn of the church that we can sing together. Let's do it again. Hallelujah. Blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Here we go. Blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Oh, what a Assurance, Jesus is mine. It is time to give at this time. Those of you out there in the virtual land, we welcome you to participate in this giving. We need your help out there. We need your help. 
We need your help. You want to be a blessing to us. We welcome you right now. You can see the information on the screen. And uh, we ask that you would give, be a blessing to us during this time of COVID season. Uh, we don't have a packed sanctuary, but God is still moving in our ministry and things need to be done. We need you, you, and you. And those in the sanctuary, we ask that you prepare this time uh, to give in your offering, your tithes. Um, we will be giving on the inside and we want everyone to dig deep down and be a blessing. You can't beat God's giving no matter how hard you try. And God has blessed you, and there's more blessings for you, but you got to give to receive. Amen. So we ask those of you who are right now, if you want to look at the screen, however you want to pay, Cash, cap, cash App, um, PayPal, and Giveify, you are welcome to give at this time, uh, wherever you are. You in your bed, roll out to bed and go get your wallet and give something to St. John. Go get your wallet and go do something. Get your phone and um, cash app and whatever it is. So many ways. Or you can come down on Sundays and meet us here and give it to us. Amen. And so we want you to know that we are open. We are letting a few people in, so you're welcome to come. We're taking our offering in the sanctuary at this time. Amen. And so those... Um, who want to give, um, you can do at this time, and we're going to move forward into our uh, giving. Amen. All right. Um, we can all stand. Amen. Someone will come and bring it to you. My story. This is my story. This is my story. Thank you for those out there in virtual land that are giving with us. We thank you so much for helping us keeping this broadcast going. Tell somebody it's time to give. Amen. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Oh, this is my story. Father, bless in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my song, praising my Savior. Oh, one more time. Let's do it one more time. Oh, this is my song. This is my song, praising my Savior. Oh, the day long. This is my song. your hands. Come on, clap your hands. Celebrate the name of the Lord Jesus. He's worthy to be praised. Won't you stand on your feet, everybody? Let's sing a little bit of this as we go into our praise and worship. Let's participate together. Stand if you can. Let's get a little Holy Ghost exercise this morning. Hallelujah. Yeah. Come on, put your hands together. That's it. We're going old school boulevard today. Is that all right? Yes, sir. Hallelujah. That's it. Clap your hands on your people. Shout out to God with the voice of triumph. He's worthy, and we're going to give him praise. Huh? Hey, listen. I love Jesus. He's my Savior. When storms are raging, he's my shelter. Hey, where he leads me, hey, I'm going to follow. 
I love Jesus and the He loves me. Clap your hands. I said I love Jesus. He's my Savior. When storms are raging, He's my shelter. Where is He? I will follow. I love Jesus and He loves me. I said I love Jesus. He is my Savior. When storms are raging. Is my shelter. I'm gonna follow. I love Jesus and He loves me. Oh, that I love it, yes I do. That I love it, yes I do. Hold on, I love it, yes I do. I love it, yes I do. Oh, I love it, yes I do. I love it, yes I do. I love Jesus and He loves me. One more time. But I love it, yes I do. I love it, yes I do. I love it, yes I do. But I love it, yes I do. Yes, I love it, yes I do. I love it, yes I do. I love Jesus and He loves me. I said I love Jesus. Hey, he's my Savior. With storms of raging, He is my shelter. Well, Jesus and He loves me. Clap your hands if you love me. Come on, come on. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Let's have a little church. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, my grandmother used to sing this, y'all. This is it. Uh, I say, You can't make me doubt it. You can't make me doubt it. You can't make me doubt it in my heart. Hey, you can't make me doubt it, but I know too much about it. You can't make me doubt it in my heart. Hey, come on, y'all. Oh, I said, you can't make me doubt it. You can't make me doubt it. You can't make me doubt it in my heart. Hey, you can't make me doubt it, but I know too much about it. Hallelujah. You can't make me doubt it in my heart. Listen, she said, and I got the love of Jesus. But I've got the love of Jesus. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. Hey, got the love of Jesus. Got the love, hey, go. But I got the love of Jesus in my heart. Hey, I said, you can't make me doubt it. You can't make me doubt it. You can't make me doubt it in my heart. Hey, you can't make me doubt it. But I know too much about him. You can make me doubt him in my heart. Clap your hands, y'all. Hey. We're talking about the good God, the worthy God, the awesome God. Hallelujah. I got one more, Stephen. It says, Oh, what he's done for me. Oh, what he's done for me. Oh, what he's done for me. Said I never shall forget what he's done for me. Hey. Oh, what he's done for me. Oh, what he's done for me. Hey. Oh, 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 what he's done for me. That I never shall forget. Hallelujah. What he's done for me. Oh, oh, what he's done for me. Oh, what he's done for me. Oh, what he's done for me. That I never shall forget what he's done. One more time, y'all. Sing it together. Oh, you got it. Oh, what he's done for me. Said I never shall forget what he's done for me. Said he picked me up and turned me around. That's what he's done for me. Placed my feet on solid ground. That's what he's done for me. Put the joy down in my heart. What he's done for me. Said I never shall forget what he's done for me. Hey, oh, what he's done for me. Oh, what is done for me? Oh, what is done for me? That I never shall, never shall forget. 
shout again. Never shout. Say it with me, y'all. Say it. Never shout. Come on, say it. Say it. Never shout again. Never shout again. Come on, y'all. Tell me. Never shout. Never shout again. Never shout again. That's my declaration. My proclamation. My determination. That I never, never, never. That I never, never, never. Never shall forget what the Lord has done. He's done so much. Hey. He's done so much. Hey. He's done so much. I can't tell it all. He's done so much. I can't tell it all. But I'm not gonna forget now. But I'm not gonna forget now. And I'm not gonna forget now. And I'm never, never gonna forget now. Never, never, never. Come on. Been good to me all along That I never shall forget What he does for me Clap your hands Oh yes Have a little church this morning Get some things. Sometime I've gone in the room to get something and got in the room and forgot what I was. I can't get nobody to help me. But I tell you what, I ain't never forgot what God has done for me. And I tell you another thing, I never shall forget what he has, what he's done for, what he's done for me. It's good to see each of you here in the sanctuary. The church is growing. The saints are slowly coming in one by one. And good to see you out there in virtual land. We thank you for your support. We thank you for your encouragements as you type and write in your response. We are grateful for you. We are the church by the sea, 7405 Rockaway Beach Boulevard in Arverne, Queens, New York, SJBC. The church by the sea. Our text is found in the Old Testament. Turn with me as you're standing to 1 Kings. 1 Kings chapter 19. The text is found in verse 3, 4, and 5 of 1 Kings chapter 19. And I'm reading it from the New Living Translation. Elijah was afraid and fled for his life. He went to Bathsheba, a town in Judah, and he left his servant there. 
Then Elijah went alone into the desert, to the wilderness, traveling all day. He sat down under a solitary bloom tree. In the King James, I think it says juniper tree. And prayed and prayed that he might die. He said, I've had enough, Lord. Take my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down and slept under the broom tree. But as he was sleeping, an angel touched him and told him, get up, get up and eat. An angel touched him and told him, wake up, get up and get up and eat. Let's pray. Father God, help me to be a better preacher. Let the words of my mouth and meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight as we study the Holy Writ. We ask these blessings that your word may go forth to inspire, to touch, and save, and deliver someone. That your word may go forth, that we may keep your word in our hearts as we encounter a brand new week. We ask these blessings in the preeminent name of Yeshua Messiah, Jesus the Christ, our Lord and Savior, your only begotten Son. Amen. I want to reason with you, preach unto you this day, the blessings that God provides when you done had enough and can't take it no more. The blessings that God provides when you've had enough and you can't take it any longer. Turn to yourself, point to yourself if you would, and let me hear you through your mask and holler, the blessings God provides when I can't go on is for me. I can't hear you. Is for who? Saints, I've discovered that life is always composed of those experiences and those encounters which provide both challenge to one's character and testing of one's spirit. In this life, we will face challenges that we encounter to test our spirit and our character. I think that life's greatest wars are never waged on physical battlefields. I think it's never waged with military weaponry. Life's greatest wars are fought on the battlefield of the mind. This is where we struggle. This is what we must face day by day as believers dealing with the battlefield of the mind. 
righteous versus unrighteousness. Holiness versus disobedience, and so on. Sacrifice versus selfishness. Our challenges are in, in the mind. Life's most serious conflicts, beloveds, is inner conflicts. And the scars of the war that inflict the most permanent wounds and cause the greatest pain are to be found not in the body, but in the soul. To be sure, life is not only composed of experiences and encounters, life also composed of a great question that you and I must ask. In every life, there are always questions which ought to be asked and which demand an answer. The first question of life is always, who am I? And the second question is like unto the first, what am I living for? Who am I? And what I am living for? However, when your life comes to a level of maturity in Christ, when your experiences and encounters have led to ups and downs, joy and sadness, some friends and enemies, sunshine and dark shadows, some trials and tribulations, some victories and defeat. Yet, there's another question that everyone must ask especially we who are believers in Christ. How did I get where I am? Which is so far from where I'm supposed to be. How did I get where I am? That seems to be so far from where I should be? And that question is relevant to the prophet Elijah. This is Elijah's situation. How? How did I get here under this juniper tree? So far from the victory at Mount Carmel, what happened that emotionally my faith fell apart? How is it I can stand before 450 prophets of Baal and declare that Yahweh is the God of God and God alone and that his answer to me from above was fire fell on a water filled altar and his command to me was kill 450 prophets by yourself before Ahab the king and now, so short a time, I'm sitting under a juniper tree wanting to die, asking the same God that was with me at Mount Carmel, the same God now in the wilderness of despair, take my life. 
take it because I'm no better than my ancestors. How did I get in this situation so far off from where I was? And I don't know, beloveds, whether you have had this experience or not. Keep living as a believer, you will. I've had this experience in these 50 years of preaching. I've had experiences, and I can look back and say, this is where I was. Now I'm here. And what happened? What happened? Don't, don't get relaxed, beloveds, on a Sunday morning victory. Because if you're not careful, a Monday morning defeat is right around the corner. I wish I had somebody that believed that if you do, clap your hands, let me hear you. Don't let your guard down after Sunday morning when the anointing fell fresh because Monday's coming and look at your enemy. He will be back. Don't take your eyes off of him. Look at your enemy because he is coming back. And sometimes you can be rejoicing in church and before you get out the building, you'll find yourself down from Mount Carmel in the valley now. Just that quick, things can happen. Can I get a witness in here? How did Elijah end up 100 miles south outside Bathsheba's city gates in the wilderness under a juniper tree waiting to die when he previously was north at Mount Carmel rejoicing. Rejoicing. How did Elijah get to where he is, which was so far from where he was. Somebody holler with me, what happened? From the mountaintop to the valley. Down in the valley wilderness, under a tree in deep despair, Depression and wanting to die. Well, I need to tell you, and there's a lot I could talk about in terms of this background, but I need to get to this point. One message. From Jezebel. When, when, when Ahab went back to the palace and told Jezebel what had happened, she wrote a letter or a note or gave a notice to the Elijah and said, I'm going to kill you. This time tomorrow, you're dead. And that one message tore him up emotionally and shook his theology to the point that he ran. Ran with his servant and then left his servant in Bathsheba and then went further out into the wilderness wanting to die. Now, sometimes we look at this, maybe even now, it's hard to see ourselves in that situation. 
Lord, kill me. I've had enough. I'm done. This is a uh, this is a paradox. It's contradictory. It's hard to believe that a man could stand so brave before 450 false prophets before a false god and heckle them. They were, he was actually heckling them. Uh, see, see if your God is asleep. Whoever God answered by fire, let him be God. And they went on, they false prophets cut themselves, went through their gyrations, went through their rituals and all of that. And Elijah was there taunting them. Well, maybe he's asleep. Holler a little louder. And then he did something even unusual. He told him, pour water on the altar. And I'll show you that as much water as you pour on here, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob will answer by fire. I went to Egypt. I went to, not Egypt. I went to Israel. And uh, or maybe I'm going to Egypt. I don't know why I said that. might be prophecy. But when I went to Israel to study for my masters, we went to Mount Carmel on a rainy day. In that area, it's called the region of Baal. And we saw the statue of Elijah the prophet. And uh, I kind of got a feeling for this text because I was there in the region, in the area, in the vicinity where this thing happened. And it was hard for me at first to see how a man of great courage could pray to God, kill me. But then when I look back over my life, and maybe you should look back over yours right now, and see how you started with such great faith and devotion and how the enemy caused you to drift away because you let your guard down. This is not nobody's fault but yours. You did this. It was not your intent when you first got saved and filled with the Holy Spirit to fall back into sin, but you did. You fell. You transgressed. You got lukewarm. You allowed the enemy to get into your mind and habits and things you said you wasn't going to do. You did it. And I'm not just preaching to you. I'm talking about myself. See, the problem in church is everybody's so holy. With superficial holiness. That if we would be more candid and honest about our circumstances and share with one another, we could really help somebody. I'm going to put you on the spot just for a minute and then I'm going to move on. How many of you ever have felt like Elijah and wanted to give up? Raise your, not only raise your hand, but stand and clap your hands so I know who you are. And now you want to give up. Shouting what he's done for me, I'll never forget. And now you done sit down. And for those of y'all that are thinking, huh, that ain't never happened to me. God got you on a target right now. 
Because he's going to let the enemy bring you down, show you how weak you really are. You ain't as strong and you ain't as deep as you think you are. The devil knows how to push your button. Can I preach to you? Fatigued. <laughs> Discouraged. Depressed. Begging God to end his life. How did all this come about? What happened? How did I get where I am? Which is so far from where I'm supposed to be. Well, understand this. Elijah was a man just like us. He had weaknesses just like us. He had faults and failures just like the great Bible stars of the scriptures. And I want again to say beware of your spiritual victories. There's a fleshly tendency to let your guard down when you done experience some great spiritual success. I want to tell you before I go, keep your guard up. Uh, keep your spiritual umbrella up even though it ain't a cloud in the sky. Because you never know when the storm will come. Now look at Elijah sitting in the wilderness under a tree asking God to take his life. Now, <laughs> I got a problem with this. Here's my problem. If you want to die, why didn't you stay where you were so Jezebel could have got her hands on you and had you killed? You're 100 miles away. Tell me I want to die. Well, if you really wanted to die, you should have stayed where you were. Am I preaching to anybody? See, the problem is not so much, the problem is not so much that he was afraid of Jezebel, and yes, he was. The problem was he was disappointed in God. Now, God, after I done did all this at Mount Carmel, I called you and you rained fire down. I called you and you gave me strength to kill 450 men. Looked like you'd have gave me some rest. Looked like you'd have gave me a break. But as soon as I turn around, I get a note that this woman Jezebel is trying to kill me and I ran. Well, let me just say it this way. Because I ain't preaching against no women. This devil spirit that's in this woman. And he ran. You ran because you were mad at God for letting this happen so quick. Now, I ain't getting no amens from y'all. But I bet you, if you tell the truth, there have been times when you've been mad at God. And if you say you haven't, I'm telling you now, before God, angels, this assembly, and the camera, you are lying. The best of us get upset when things ain't going the way it should. The best of us want to give up. The best of us want to quit. 
the best of us feel like I'm not appreciated. Can I preach to you? Well, I need to give you this and I'm, I'm going to quit, I promise you. If you have any victories at all, it ain't because of you. Point to yourself and say, it ain't because of me. If there's any victories in your life, it's because of the grace of God that looked beyond your fault and saw. Saw your fears. So Elijah sits here. Goes to sleep, upset and, and despondent, discouraged, and I may say angry with God. But I'm so glad that God understands us. And I'm so glad that God does not get intimidated by our frustrations. I'm so glad that God is God. And God, yes, Lord, knows what we need. And God knows our heart. I wish I had a church in here. I'm glad that the Lord put him to sleep. Sleep off your anger. Sleep off your frustration. Sleep off your despondency. And while he was in his sleep, a heavenly visitor came. Hey, 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 an angel from on high came and tapped the prophet on the shoulder and said to the prophet, wake up. You, you've had enough rest. Get up and I want you to eat something. Do I have a witness? And when Elijah got up, he said, well, I feel better, but I'm the only one, Lord, that's standing for you. And I hear God saying, I got 7,000 that's never bowed to Baal. Oh, beloved. Turn to somebody, they may not be able to hear you, but point to them and tell them, you ain't by yourself. God got 7,000 that ain't never turned the bell. You're not by yourself, because God got some people that haven't done all the stand. We'll stand. Can you wave your hand and say yes? Get up. God still got to work for you. Get up. Hold your head high. Get up. It ain't time for you to die. Get up. Because they that wait I'm feeling kind of happy now. On the Lord, he shall renew your strength. Get up and walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And fear no evil because the Lord still has a work for you. Look at somebody and tell them, don't die yet. 
I know what the enemy told you, <laughs> but don't die yet. God is still on the throne. Do not throw in the towel. God is still on the throne. St. John, we're not what we used to be. And we've drifted so far from where we once was. But I came to tell you, get up, hold your ground. God, God, have some work still for you. Do I have a witness? You're not by yourself. God got 7,000 out there waiting to come in here. Do I have a witness? God! 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 Same God that was on Mount Carmel will be with you down in the valley. Look at somebody and tell them, neighbor, he's the same yesterday. And he's showing up the same, same the day, same God that brought you through Saturday is the same that will bring you through Sunday. Same God that brought you last year will bring you through this year. Same God. Clap your hands and give God a hand to pray. Get up, but not only get up, but here, eat something. In other words, if you let me put it in this way, open back your Bible and start eating the Word of God. Give us this day our daily prayer. Do I have a witness? Reach out and say, Lord, feed me. I won't no more. I might get weak, but give me strength. I might get hungry, but feed me from on high. Is there anybody here? Is there anybody here? Is there anybody here that feel like you can go another mile? Raise your hand if you're willing. To go another mile, use me, Lord, in thy service. Draw, draw me nearer every day. I, I'm willing, anybody willing to go all the way? Yeah! I want to put a notice on this pandemic and that wicked man on Pennsylvania Avenue and that bewitched party that's following him. I'm not ready to die. I'm not going down at the hands of the enemy because I know who. I know who holds my hand. I know there's blessings over my head. And beloveds, I know you can't see them, but if I were you, I'd reach up and grab a blessing and give God a praise. Praise Him! Ooh. 
let 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 the Lord, 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 the Lord. Done, but let the turn to somebody and tell them, neighbor, if they can hear you, if the devil send you a message this week, don't run in the wilderness. Stay right there and just shout the Lord, 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 the Lord. If you can't say nothing else. Just raise your hand and shout, the Lord, 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 the Lord. You, you ain't got to be scared. I want you to bump up against somebody and tell them the Lord, 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 the Lord. Another Holy Ghost clap. Give me another Holy Ghost clap. yesterday that I was having trouble with my voice and I really didn't know whether I'd be able to preach today but when I woke up evangelist but the Lord Lord woke me up, said go eat something, put on your clothes and go another round because I'm on the throne. Somebody 
to jump up again and shout, but the Lord. for a minute but the Lord I'm preaching this morning Gail because but the Lord I'm doing it today because what the Lord what the Lord but the Lord but the Lord Extend to you out there. Hey, 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 hey! I feel the Holy Ghost in here. We're going and give God a praise. Yeah, 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 yeah. I see you back there. Go on and pray. just gave me this, bump up against somebody and tell them, I'm going back where I used to be. Where I ran from, I'm going back with victory. I'm going back with victory. extend an invitation come to Christ not no organization 
<laughs> come to Christ. If you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God, after Jesus made an atonement for you, raised him from the dead, you shall be. You ain't got to sell a bunch of magazines. No newspapers knock on no doors. Confess Christ and you shall be saved. God bless you. Come on, evangelist. I don't feel no waste time. Can we sing this to him? Come too far from where I started from. Nobody told me the road would be easy. I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me. You got to sing it for yourself. Somebody help me sing. Yes, Lord, I don't feel no way time. I just can't give up. Come too far from where I started from. One more time, let's declare it all over the building. Everybody sing I, I just can't give up now. He's done too much for me, even if I have to cry. Come too far from where I start, I start it from. Nobody. I don't believe he You got to say it for yourself Don't believe But God, but God, but God God's gonna do it I don't believe he brought me this far No he didn't He's done this and he's done that And I don't believe He's made a way He's healed my body I don't believe No, 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 no I can't turn around, I've come too far. Don't believe. Oh, I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me. Lift your hands if you believe that. He brought me too far. But God, even when I'm crying in the midnight hour, I lift my hands and I trust him, but God, but God, but God, nobody told me that this road would be easy, and I don't believe he brought you this far to leave me. Oh, lift your hands all over the building and bless him. If that's your testimony, lift your hands and bless him. Bless him for the word for this week because you don't know what you're going to encounter. But what you do know is but God, 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 but God.
but God, but God, but God. I can't give up because of God. I won't give up because of God. I've come too far because of God. Hallelujah. Worship the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Come too far from where I ran. Star started from mm, nobody told me that the road would be easy as we lift up our hands we still singing don't believe just look back over your life what God has already done for you meditate on the word when you want to give up God gave you grace Two things I want to share. The women's conference is coming. Virgil, give her a mic. Somebody give her a mic. Mother Simmons going to get some information on that. I got so happy I forgot what else I was supposed to do. <laughs> and if, if y'all have not registered to vote, we supposed to have someone in this house that's uh, running for president of the NAACP and they ain't here to get no information out. So I'm telling you it's time to vote. If you have not registered, it's time to register to vote. And that's, this is an important election. Amen. Either we move forward or go backwards into slavery. Now someone get in touch with sister and tell her she need to bring some information and step up to the plate. Or you know, somebody will step up for her. Amen. All right, mother. God bless you. We are so excited that you have joined us today. We hope something was said, um, sung, preached, that you really enjoyed, that touched your life, that blessed your life. We ask that you would like, 
share, follow the page, tell someone about SJBC. We hope that you will tune in again on next week. Until then, God be with you. God bless you. We love you in Jesus' name.